Welcome to My Savior Lives Northland. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a service of worship led by local pastors and members of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. MSL Northland is locally produced with a message for the world. Welcome to My Savior Lives Northland. My name is Mark Pesky. I shepherd Our Redeemer Congregation in Cohasset, Minnesota. And we're filming here today at Our Redeemer Church in Cloquet. We'll begin our service in just a moment after our first hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let's confess our sins together before God. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. But for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name, Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of God, I therefore announce to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first scripture reading today is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. The priest and captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people, proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. 
they seized Peter and John, and because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed. So the number of men who believed grew to about 5,000. The next day, the rulers, the elders, the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there, and so was Caiaphas, John Alexander, and others of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name do you do this? They said. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading for today comes from the first letter of John, the third chapter beginning at the 16th verse, where John writes these words. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or talk, but with action and truth. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him, and he lives in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our gospel reading today comes from the gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. I am the good shepherd, Jesus said. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to join with me in confessing our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I am the good shepherd, said Jesus to us today in our gospel reading. You know, it's a little known fact that the word pastor is actually the word shepherd. When Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, he's saying, I am your good and true pastor. What makes a good pastor? Well, I believe a good pastor, or as I ask my people to call me, their shepherd, I believe a good shepherd always points us to the good shepherd. And a good shepherd always helps us to hear the words of the good shepherd. But religion, faith, spirituality, however you might refer to it, can sometimes be confusing, can it? I mean, there are so many religions, so many churches. It's so hard to know, really, what is the truth, what to believe. Well, today in our second reading, John, one of Jesus' followers, who was himself a simple man, a fisherman, made it real simple for us when he said this. This is his command, that we believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he commanded. To believe in Jesus and to love one another. In my church, we oftentimes refer to the cornerstones, the foundations of who we are as a body, as a church, as faith and love. It's the very things John referred to here today. If you were to search through the writings of the New Testament, you would find that in many of the apostles' writings, they're constantly referring to faith and love. Paul, in the beginning of his letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 1, verse 3, said, I thank God for you because your faith is growing and your love is increasing. When he looked at his people, he was looking for faith and love. But what exactly is faith and love? How do we make those more than just catchphrases? Well, today our writings, our readings, have some very specific information for us. So our, our gospel reading says, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Or as John put it in his writing, Christ laid down his life for us. The first thing God wants us to have faith in 
The first thing he wants you to believe is that Christ loved you enough to die for you. You know, you might think, uh, I'm not sure anybody would love me enough to die for me. But I can tell you today that there is someone who loves you that much, that it's Jesus. And he, he laid down his life, not just his physical life, to spare your physical life as someone who would push someone out of the way of an oncoming car. No, Jesus suffered the pains of the soul. He suffered the guilt and punishment of your sin, the shame of all the wrongs that you've ever done and that have ever been done to you. He suffered and died for you so that your soul might be living in him. The first thing God wants you to have faith in and to know is that Christ loves you enough to lay down his life for you. The second thing Jesus wants you to know and assures you in our reading today is that he knows you better than anyone else. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. They too will listen to my voice. It's easy to feel isolated in this world, especially in these past months when so many of us have been staying, keeping our distance from others. It's easy to feel isolated, and that, that can lead to the feeling like, you know, nobody really knows me. They don't know the things that I struggle with, that I suffer with, that I go through. But Jesus is here today to tell you, I know my sheep. He knows you. And not only that, you can know him. He wants you to be able to listen to his voice. Now you might think, oh, I, I, don't, I, I don't know anything about hearing God's voice. But the truth of the matter is, he speaks to you right here today. As you are listening to God's word, read and spoken to you, it's Jesus who is speaking. You can hear his voice saying to you, I am your good shepherd. I love you. I know you. I want you to follow me. Yes, the second thing that you and I can believe is that Jesus knows us. And finally, the last thing that Jesus wants us to be assured of today is that he wants to gather all of his sheep into his loving embrace. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen, Jesus said. I must bring them also. Maybe you're thinking today of a, a wayward child, a friend who's struggling with agonies of body or soul, or some family member who just seems lost. You know what? Jesus cares about them. He wants to reach out to them too and to bring them into his sheep pen of grace, into his embrace of love. And here's the really crazy part. He may want to use you, one of the fellow sheep. Well, you might think, well, <laughs> How could I ever bring someone to Jesus? But you know, it's as simple as saying, you know, I, I was watching a TV show the other day and this guy said that Jesus is my good shepherd who laid down my, his life for me and who knows me and wants me to follow him. What do you believe about Jesus? <laughs> that may be all it takes to start a conversation about faith that will end up with another lost soul another lost sheep finding his way back to the Good Shepherd. Faith. It's the cornerstone and foundation of all that God wants to do and teach us. And then love. What does love mean? Well, first of all, Jesus said this. When the wolf attacks the flock, the hired man who doesn't care for the sheep, who doesn't love the sheep, he runs away, but not the good shepherd. The good shepherd is there to stay in the fight and to lay down his life for the sheep. Now, one thing that has occurred to me as I've thought of my work as a pastor 
in terms of shepherding is to realize that the process of shepherding is something that goes on in lots more places than inside the four walls of a church. If you're a parent with children, you are shepherding those little ones, guiding them in the right path, providing for them, watching over them, keeping them together. Maybe you're a, a manager or a boss at work. You can shepherd your crew as you help them to work together and to keep focused on the right road. Whether you're a teacher, a coach, a grandparent, whoever the people are that are in your sphere of influence, God can work through you to shepherd them. And here's the really important part. There will be attacks by the wolf. The devil, the enemy of our soul, is always trying to scatter every group, whether it be a family, a working crew, a church, a team, a school class, no matter who it is. The devil is always trying to divide and to scatter that group. And so to love means that you look at the the people in your world and you say, by God's grace and with his help, I'm not going to run away when the going gets tough. I'm going to stick in there. Just as Jesus didn't run away that night in the Garden of Gethsemane when the attackers came against him. And why did he not run away? Because he saw on the other side of the cross a glorious resurrection. When your little flock, whoever it may be, is attacked, God may be saying to you, don't run away, my child. Because on the other side of this this difficult time, on the other side of this suffering, on the other side of this cross, there is a glorious resurrection. Stay there as I will walk through this trial with you. And then a second thing that we can learn today from the scriptures about love is that love gets busy. You know, I I think oftentimes that love is conceived of in our world today as a, a warm feeling. But really, in the scriptures, love is a labor. John wrote this, wrote, wrote this, Dear children, let us love not just with words or talk, but with actions. Love gets to work. Love rolls up its sleeves and digs in, even at the hard jobs, whether it's washing the dishes when you don't really feel like it, taking your turn or maybe your spouse's turn to watch the kids because they need a break, going the extra mile at work, being that kind of an employee that will make your boss proud. Love rolls up its sleeves and says, how can I serve those around me for God's sake? Yes, let's not just love with words and talk, but with action and truth. And lastly, we learn from the scriptures today that love, well, actually love and faith is what keeps us living in God. John writes this. We keep his commands and please him. And this is his command, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps God's command lives in him, and he lives in them. Does God seem far away to you today? He doesn't want to be. He wants to live in you, and he wants you to live in him. And it's as simple as listening to the voice of your good shepherd, the one who says, I love you enough to die for you, who calls you to follow him. It means... Resolving in your mind that I'm not going to listen to my own sinful, selfish desires when they tell me what to do. I'm not going to listen to the the people around me and just jump whenever they say, this is what you have to do. I'm not going to listen to the crowd, whether it be at school or at work. I'm not going to listen to the faces on TV or the experts who tell me what I have to do. 
I'm going to listen first and foremost to the voice of my Good Shepherd, to the call of God. I am going to trust Him and endeavor to learn from Him, from God who is love, how to live in love. Because when you and I do that, then we will be living in God and God will be living in us. Lord Jesus, thank you that you came to give us a solid foundation for our life, to teach us what to believe and how to love. And we ask, dear Lord, that you would live in us by your word and spirit on a daily basis so that we could live in you and that your faith and love might spread through us to all those around us. For we ask it in your name and pray as you have taught us our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the partnership of the Holy Spirit stay with us all. Amen. Thank you for joining us in worship today. If you would like more information about a church in your area, or if this program has been a blessing to you, please send comments and contributions to MSL Northland, CO Mount Olive Lutheran Church, 2012 East Superior Street, Duluth, Minnesota, 55812. We appreciate your support and prayers for this ministry. My Savior Lives Northland is a production of Stokes Media House in conjunction with the Wisconsin and Minnesota North Districts of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod and supported by viewers like you.